Siemen Company's MTRJ connector is a dual fiber factory polished small form factor multi-mode connector that requires half the density of a standard SC or ST style connector. Termination procedures and appropriate tools will be demonstrated using 900 micron buffered fibers in this video. This procedure is based on revision E of the hard copy MTRJ termination instructions. For the most up-to-date instructions, please reference the instruction document included with each box of connectors and also available for download from our website. Before termination of the MTRJ connector, verify that all required tools are available. Siemens Visual Fault Locator, or VFL, with a dual light source is a required tool in order to ensure a proper termination. The activation tool has several functions. It positions the interface to the VFL and new connector for fiber insertion. It rotates the collar that aligns the fibers and crimps the buffered fiber strands in place. The tool makes connector assembly easy and accurate. Prepare the activation tool by swinging open the crimp handle and rotating the wrench lever straight up. For proper fit of the blue VFL adapter, the slider must be rotated into the wide position. While holding the spring-loaded slider over the rounded opening as shown here, rotate 90 degrees. The MTRJ connector consists of several components. The front protective cover, the connector body itself, including the activation collar, as well as the lead-in tube, the rubber grommet or rear dust cover, the metal crimp sleeve and larger 3 mm boot used in conjunction with jacketed cable, and finally the smaller or 900 micron boot used for buffered strands. The MTRJ connector is offered in both 62.5 micron and 50 micron core sizes. Be sure both your cable and connector are of the same variety. The multimode version of the MTRJ can be identified either by the part number on the packaging and more recently by the housing color on all the latest manufactured connectors. The 62.5 micron MTRJ is now colored coded beige and the 50 micron MTRJ remains black. Prepare the connector for loading into the activation tool by removing the rubber grommet covering the lead-in tube as well as the front protective cap. Insert the connector into the large end of the VFL adapter as shown. This adapter will allow connection to the VFL to provide a visual indication of a good connection during the termination. Examine the connector to make sure it is in the open position. The connector is open when the key on the collar is positioned 90 degrees from the up lettering on the VFL adapter. Pull the slider back out of the way and insert the connector into the tool as far as it will go. You will need to angle the connector slightly up in through the opening for a proper fit. The lead-in tube should rest on the crimp platform when the connector is fully seated. Do not attempt to force the connector into the tool. Alternatively, the slider may be held into place by partially rotating it as shown here. This will free both hands for inserting the connector. Finish by rotating the slider back to the wide position and gently release onto the VFL adapter. The VFL provides a convenient dual source output to light up both fibers in the MTRJ at the same time. Be sure the VFL has fresh batteries and always check for proper operation and adequate light intensity coming from both ports of the VFL. Be sure to use caution when operating the laser of the VFL to avoid shining into your eyes and always turn the unit off when not in use. Connect the VFL by lacing the MTRJ side of the hybrid patch cord through the opening in the crimp handle and then plug into the blue adapter as shown. The dual ST side of the cord should be connected to the dual ports of the VFL. When terminating 900 micron buffered fiber, choose the small boot sliding the narrow end first down both buffered strands until it is out of the way. With the end of the fibers placed at the zero mark of the template card provided, 
Measure and mark 40 millimeters from the end of each buffered fiber. Also place an additional mark at the 51 millimeter point to be used as a visual aid. Next remove the 40 millimeter section of each buffer with a buffer stripper. To avoid breaking the fiber, remove the buffer in three to four sections. Carefully inspect each fiber after stripping. Notice the remnants of the protective coating on these fiber strands. Sometimes mistaken to be the fiber cladding, this coating must be completely removed for the fibers to fit into the connector. Clean both bare fibers with two passes of an alcohol wipe being careful not to touch the fibers after it is cleaned. Also be careful not to remove the visual marks. The cleaving process is a critical step. Without a flawless cleave technique, a good quality connection may be difficult to obtain. Prepare the cleaver by pressing the handle to open the fiber clamp. Inspect the clamp area for any end pieces of fiber from a previous cleave. If present, remove the end pieces with tweezers and place on a loop of tape for proper disposal. Also note that the cleaving blade on the tool may become contaminated during multiple cleaves. It is recommended to clean the blade with an alcohol wipe after every four to five cleaves. This will ensure an optimal cleave is achieved. Now with the fibers in one hand and the cleaver in the other, press the handle to open the fiber clamp. Using the slotted guide, slide the fibers onto the fiber clamp until both buffers touch the stop. Also take notice of the visual mark alignment. This should be their final position when fully inserted into the connector. If both fibers were measured and stripped accurately, the marks will be exactly adjacent to each other. Release the clamp onto the bare fibers and gently press down the cleaver arm until it just touches the fibers and guide. Do not use excessive pressure which may result in a poor cleave. Be careful not to bow or flex the fibers or the fiber guide during the cleaving process. Both fibers must be flat against the fiber guide and as straight and parallel as possible for a proper cleave angle. Also be careful not to use the fiber clamp handle for support during subsequent steps to prevent accidental release of the fibers during the cleave. With your thumb and forefinger close to the fiber stop, flex the fiber guide as shown to break the fibers. The fibers should break cleanly at the cleave and are now ready for insertion into the connector. It is recommended to immediately continue onto the fiber insertion step to reduce the possibility of contaminants getting onto the freshly cleaved fibers. Do not touch or re-wipe the fibers. This can leave a film on the fibers or cause debris to be deposited on the end face of the fibers affecting the termination. In preparation of fiber insertion, turn on the VFL unit by depressing and holding the power button for two seconds. If the VFL is connected correctly, the visible red laser will cause the collar of the MTRJ connector to glow brightly. Prepare the fiber for insertion by pressing the button on the activation tool to open the indexing rollers. Insert both fibers between the rollers and release. The use of the rollers are optional but can be used to help guide the fibers into the lead-in tubes as well as maintain inward fiber pressure for the subsequent steps. Before insertion, note the color and orientation of the buffered strands. To maintain proper system polarity, it is essential that the MTRJ connector on one end of the duplex cable is assembled with the color buffers swapped or reversed in comparison to the opposite end. After verifying proper polarity, carefully guide the fibers straight into the corresponding lead-in tubes. Avoid bumping the fibers on the edge of the lead-in tube to prevent a possible fracture. If you feel resistance prior to full insertion, do not force the fibers in. Adjust the position and the angle of the fibers slightly until they can be reinserted unforced. Note that withdrawing the fibers all the way out of the connector and then reinserting may introduce contaminants onto the index matching gel and result in a poor quality connection. Use the visual aid marks to verify both fibers are fully and equally inserted. 
you should feel the fibers firmly stop against the internal fiber stub. If measured correctly, the visual marks should be adjacent to each other and approximately even with the end of the lead-in tube. While maintaining inward pressure, swing the lever 90 degrees to rotate the collar. An audible click from the tool is normal. The rotation of the collar will align the fibers as well as secure them in place. Inward pressure may also be accomplished by forming a slight bow on the strands secured by the rollers. If the fibers have been properly stripped and cleaved and fully seated against the internal fiber stubs, the red glow of the collar will diminish upon insertion of the fibers and fully extinguish upon rotation of the wrench handle. If the red glow of the collar does not fully extinguish, rotate the wrench handle back upright and try readjusting both fibers to ensure proper insertion. If still unsuccessful, remove the fibers to determine the cause of the failure. A retermination with a new connector and recleaved fiber may be required. Next, rotate the crimp handle until it contacts the lead-in tube. Push down firmly to crimp. The tool cannot over crimp the connector. Flip the crimp handle back. You should see a flat impression in the lead-in tube indicating a proper crimp. Leave the wrench handle down. Remove the connector by lifting it and the cable straight up and out of the tool. Disconnect the VFL adapter and replace the protective cap back on the connector. Finally, slide the boot up the back of the connector until it reaches the collar. To provide additional strain relief, three to four drops of the provided Loctite 411 adhesive applied around the entrance of the lead-in tube will increase the pull-out force from the typical one or two pounds to approximately six pounds. Do not apply adhesive to the rear of the boot since this will result in a stiff and brittle flex point on the buffered strands after the adhesive dries. The connector is now ready to use. Leave the front protective cap on until you are ready to connect to an adapter. Just prior to insertion of the connector into an adapter, it is important to clean very thoroughly between and around the alignment pins. A lint-free cleaning stick such as shown here dipped in reagent grade alcohol and followed by a dry lint-free wipe is ideal for this critical step. A properly cleaned end phase can make a significant difference in the performance of your system.